everyone. My name is Chloe, and I'm coming to you today on a gloomy, gloomy Saturday. And we have had like a string of gloomy days, and I am just loving it, honestly. It is like fall. It's a crisp 53 degrees, and like I don't, I never thought I would say this, but I am actually kind of enjoying it. And just uh, enjoying the slower pace that kind of cloudy, cold, colder days um, kind of require of you. I just, I'm ready for it. So, um, I'm doing this a little bit early just because I have to film on weekends. And um, so it's October 14th as I film this. But I'm going to talk to you guys about all the books that I read in the first half of October. Also because a lot of these are due back at the library. I feel like the library right now is like hopping. There's all these requests all the time. We have 67 books out right now, you guys, between my kids and myself. And that is like so overwhelming that I really want to get through some of them so we can return them back. So um, as always, let's talk about the stats. And the stats are only the books that I read independently for myself, not the books that I read with my kids. However, I will um, talk to you about some of the books that I read with my kids because we've read some really good ones. Um, so let's get into it. So in the first half of October, I have read nine books and DNF'd two, you guys. There was a point in this the last couple of weeks that I was starting to feel super slumpy because of all these DNFs, but you guys, every time I do this, every time I talk about it, I feel like, who am I DNFing? Because I'm so proud of myself because I could have trudged through and like just even with DNFing, I was feeling slumpy and even some of the stuff I read wasn't great. So you'll see about that later, but like good for you getting rid of books that aren't doing it for you. So um, I read 2,730 pages, which is 195 pages per day. Uh, the average page length was 303 pages per book. And so that's um, about two thirds of a book a day. I read six novels and three graphic novels. So you guys, I am still on this kick of like middle grade graphic novels. It's a spiral because I find one and either I want to read the rest of the series or then the library app like suggests other ones that are like it or like the displays or it's just for some reason it's a thing right now. So um, I read six adult and three middle grade. Again, I read more middle grade with my kids, but um, for myself, I read the three middle grade. Um, two were from my shelf, seven were from, from somewhere else, so woof. Um, I read three from the library, three from NetGalley, one from Libby, one from Libro FM, and one on my shelf. So um, quite the little variety, and those are where I primarily read them. Because like I said, two were from my shelf, but I, I read it more digitally, so that's how I categorize that. Um, and so kind of on that, I had four audio, four um uh, print books and one ebook. Um, seven were new release and two were backlist, which is really crazy. So what actually happened this month is NetGalley. So I, uh, if you have not heard of NetGalley, it's a website that anybody can go onto. You don't have to have a platform of any size or any anything, um, and you can request advanced reader copies of books. There's audiobooks, there's ebooks, and you can advance or. Uh, uh, request advanced copies. And so I do that very occasionally. Honestly, I go on NetGalley about once a month to look up um, like my anticipated reads. NetGalley is a huge source for that. And while I'm there, I always click around. Well, somehow some of them have like flown under my radar and I have some that have archived that are like I no longer can download them from from NetGalley. So I've been trying to do those from Libby as well um, and also trying to keep up with the ones that I have requested lately. So that's kind of what happened. That's why there's all the new releases. I'm trying to like get all the backlist from this year as well as all the stuff, just all the stuff. Try to get my net galley percentage up, story of my life. Um, so as far as genre goes, I read three romance, two women's fiction, two contemporary, one cozy mystery, and one sci-fi fantasy. So let's get in the star ratings. Two DNFs, of course. One two and a half star, five three star, two three and a half stars, uh, and four, four stars. So the average was 3.17. So when I tell you guys that I had to kind of trudge through some stuff this first half of the month, I was trudging through some stuff because for me, a three star is like, meh, if you're really interested, pick it up. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but I'm not like upset by it. So whatever. Um, so it's just kind of a meh month, but um, let's get into it. Let's just get into the books. So the first one, uh, I'm going to start with the middle grades and then I will have little timestamps down below of the different like age ranges. Um, and these first handful I read with my kids. So we read, um, the first in the Jasmine Green Rescue series, and this is called A Piglet Called Truffle. And this is a, about a little girl named Jasmine Green who lives on a farm with her parents and, um, her mom is a vet and I don't know if you can hear, there's quite the pitter patter going on, but, um, 
uh, her mom is a vet, and they go to like a neighbor neighboring farm, and this um, cow or Jesus Louise pig has had a bunch of piglets, and one of them Jasmine finds like kind of stuffed underneath. She's the runt of the litter, and she is not doing well. And so the farmer's like, whatever, just you know, survival of the fittest. If she can't make it, she can't make it. And Jasmine's like, you're gonna just let her die. So Jasmine takes her home and takes care of her. And this, I don't know when this is told, if this is supposed to be present day. It felt a little historical, but anyway, takes her home and secretly nurses her um, back to life. And this piglet called Truffle becomes like a puppy to her. Like it, it is so cute, so sweet. We cannot wait to finish this series. I really, or continue in this series. I really, really enjoy it. Next was the Boxcar Children Beginning. So this is a prequel. It's a, you know, before the first Boxcar Children. And it's written by uh, Patricia McLaughlin, um, who is not the writer of the Boxcar Children series. And you guys, skip it. Skip it, skip it, skip it. So in the second half of September, we read the first Boxcar Children. And I loved it. It was so good. So we thought, well, we'll go back and do the prequel and then continue on. And I would not do that. This was not not good. Not good. So this is about the kid's life on a farm with their parents before their parents die. And yes, the end is really emotional. My oldest and I um, had to like pause and have a little cry. Um, my youngest thought, or my middle thought it was funny because she's like just, <laughs> she doesn't have the empathy gene that my oldest daughter and I do. But um, anyway, so uh, this was just, the writing style was really staccato, really just, it just wasn't good. I, I would not, I don't feel like this added much to the story. The characters, like, they felt like children, whereas in the Boxcar Children, they feel like like um, independent children or, like, they felt very strong, whereas this one, they felt kind of weak personalities. Um, not weak, like, they are weak, but, like, it, their personalities just weren't strong. They really had differentiated strong personalities in the first one, and I didn't feel that from this. I wouldn't recommend Next is Dory Phantasmagory. Uh, this is the first in a series, and these are really easy reads. Um, my daughter could read these on her own, but we read them together. It's about a little girl named Dory Phantasmagory. She's got two older siblings that always kind of leave her out, and um, she has a, a, an imaginary friend, and it's really cute. It's definitely, there's definitely some, like, brattiness that I don't love, um, but we're going to continue on in the series and kind of just see. Uh, there's a lot of name calling and stuff like that, so it's definitely one that we have conversations about as we read but it was it's okay it's good entertaining for sure um this is the storm which is the first in the lighthouse family by uh cynthia ryland so cynthia ryland has written so many things like she is awesome and this did not feel like her normal stuff which is fine but this is about a cat who is um the caretaker of a lighthouse and one day a storm happens and this dog is shipwrecked and so um she kind of takes care of him and gets him healthy again and then he decides to stay and they become like companions and um the book ends with three little mice that kind of need their help so they have they take the mice in and um this was definitely a good like set up book for the rest of the series um but it wasn't like super riveting it's all it's like 75 pages maybe so it's really pretty quick and short um but it, I don't know. I'm I'm cautiously optimistic about the series. It, I love like especially with my daughters. I love these books that are have animals as main characters because I feel like it's just a little more wholesome. And they're five and three, so like wholesome is good. Um, they're just ex incredibly advanced readers and listeners. Um, they love stories and they love chapter books. So here we are. Um, next is the middle grades that I read for myself. So the first one is The Do-Over. Um, this is by Rodrigo Vargas and Connie Yovanovins. Um, this is a graphic novel about some kids who have a, like, hair, hair cutting and styling, um, truck. And, uh, it was fine. It was three stars. It was all right. It was a, like, I'm not going to continue in the series, but it was fine. Next I read Dear Brother. Um, and this is by Allison McGee and Twan... Nini, maybe? Um, this is a companion, but to a book called Dear Sister about this little boy who, I think he's like eight or something. You know, he's an older kid and he is about to get a little sister and he's not happy about it. And then the baby comes and he's not very happy about it. But then in the end, he's, he, uh, like has a soft heart and misses her. Well, this one, it's the sister. Now she's, you know, however old and the brother's a teenager and he's at music camp. And so at first she's talking, you know, kind of bad about him and then she misses him. And this one, she was just very, very, very bratty and very kind of self-absorbed where it just didn't seem 
Um, like, I don't know why. For some reason, I didn't have the same level of compassion as the young boy getting a sibling, even though she's probably about the same age. Um, I I don't know. I guess just being the baby of the family, especially like that, it kind of found it hard to believe that the brother was like the star of the show. I think it for, for in my as a reader, I'm like, mm, girlfriend, maybe that's just your perspective. But who knows? I don't know. This one is just fine, too. Three stars. And finally, another just fine middle grade graphic novel was Long Distance. This was on the shelf of like uh, librarians recommend. So somebody in the library I was in really liked this one. And this was okay. This is about a girl who goes to summer camp. Her parent, her dads force her to go um, to make friends because they moved to this new area or whatever and she doesn't have any friends. So she, they force her to go to this like outdoor wilderness camp. And things are a little weird there. And uh, this takes kind of a paranormal twist. And it was fine. It just was very like um, kind of out of left field. And things were just underexplained. It was underdeveloped. Uh, it was just okay. Then let's the one why adult, why adult, yeah, mm -hmm, young adult. Um, you guys also bedtime has been a nightmare in this house. Uh, this is a side tangent, but we, so my kids were up until 1030 last night, 1030, they're five, three and one, and they were up till 1030 last night. And then everybody's up at 730 this morning. So, um, we're all tired because of course I was up, uh, well before 730, but anyway, Brain's moving a little slow. I feel like I say that every video. But uh, for, so the one young adult I attempted was for a um, my October book haul revisit. So uh, I DNF'd this and I will um, let you watch that video that comes out here later um, to see why. But this is a graphic novel that I was given so kindly because it has my name obviously in the title. Um, but I did not read it. And then for the adult books. So I read The Secret Book and Scone Society um, by Ellery Adams. And a lot of you guys suggested this one as a, as a good cozy mystery. And this had the bones of a cozy mystery that I would love. Uh, it's bookish. It is foodie. Like, it's all the things. It's got great female friendship, all of that. But I found myself wanting the women's fiction element of this so much more than I wanted the the mystery. And so it kind of, like, I kind of zoned out in all the mystery parts, even though that's, like, the point of a cozy mystery. So this is about a town um, where people come to get kind of healed. And it's the, um, let's see, it's a bakery owner, a bookstore owner, a spa owner, and somebody who works at, like, the magic pools or whatever. And the four of them, um, somebody comes into town and before like she, the library or the bookstore owner can recommend the perfect book, he, he winds up dead. And so they have to figure out who done it. Um, there's another murder that they kind of get involved in. And, uh, I just wanted the women's fiction. I didn't really care about the mystery. And so I think I just like, I really want to be into cozy mysteries right now because tis the season, but I'm just not. Like, they're just not doing it for me. I don't know why. I know this is, like, so well-loved. I don't know. It was, I mean, it was fine. It was three stars. I just didn't care about the mystery, and I wanted the women's fiction element. So, what's that say? That's probably a me problem. Definitely. Um, so, my other my other DNF was a shocker to me, but it is Paris Dallincourt is About to Crumble by Alexis Hall. So, this is number two in the Winter Bakes All series. Uh, and I like the first one. I think I gave it, like, three stars, maybe. And this one is about a guy who is on the show. Um, it's like Great British Bake Off. He's on the show, and he starts to have feelings for one of the other contestants. And um, the guy suffers from anxiety, and that's fine. Um, but there's just a lot of self-doubt and stuff, and it's very repetitive, almost comes off whiny. I just could not get engaged. There's also just so much crassness. His roommate or something is just vulgar, and I didn't like it, and I don't know. I I don't think I'll be continuing with this series or maybe even Alexis Hall. Um, I just feel like I'm out of my romance, like the kind of, not smutty, this isn't smutty, but kind of vulgar romance, crass romance. And I, I'm not saying that it, it my my tolerance for it is pretty low right now. And I don't know why um, it just is. And so this isn't a bad book. If you love it, I definitely don't think it's a bad book. I don't think anything is wrong with anybody that enjoys this. Um, my threshold is just very, very low right now. And so this was too much for me at this time. Next is A Perfect Pairing by Cheryl Lister. So this is, um, I think this was also part of my book haul revisit. Hold on. Let me check because I don't want to say too much about it and then be redundant. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Um, I don't know why I read this. 
Maybe it was. I don't know. Um, anyway, I didn't really like this book. Two and a half stars. It's about, uh, it's like an enemies to lovers. I don't actually even really remember it. It attempts to have like a women's fiction um, spin or like the, with this supper club. Um, but the friendships were weak. Uh, these two people have to come back together to work on a construction project. He's taking over like his grandpa's construction business. She's like an interior designer and whatnot. They come back together um, and they hate each other for like four seconds and then all of a sudden they're in love again and it was fine. Two and a half stars. I, I wouldn't recommend it. There's better. Um, let's see. And then I think I'm going to have to insert pictures of some of the others because of NetGalley. So let's see. We've got uh, The Other Year by Rhea Frey. And I gave this four stars. I've really liked, or Rhea Frey maybe, I've really liked everything I've read by her. And this is a, about a single mother um that the father is still like alive and stuff he's just uh he travels a lot and so he's uber uninvolved um but he still is involved in some ways but for all intents and purposes a single mother she is with her nine-year-old daughter at the beach and um in one circumstance her daughter goes under the water and she's just swimming around she's a great swimmer she pops back up everything's fine she like the mother has that moment of like oh my gosh where's my kid but then she pops up she's fine everything's great um, the, and then we get alternate timeline of what would have happened if she would have drowned. And so there's a, like an author's note at the beginning of this, um, talking about her, or like Rhea Fry's own life and how she never really wanted to be a mother. And then she ended up having a daughter and like just how much that daughter means to her and how, um, you know, what would have, like writing this book, she thought what would happen if anything ever happened to her beloved daughter and, as an anxiety sufferer, I would say uh, tread with caution, you guys, because I, this is an anxiety spiral that I have been down many, many, many times, many, many, many times. And I don't know that I like, if for that reason, I was enthralled because I could really relate to the author um, in the process of like following that spiral of gosh, what would happen? Like just worst case scenario, what happens? And um it was heartbreaking. Like it, I was nauseous in the beginning, like when she was going through the initial grief of her daughter having drowned. And, um, so major trigger warnings. If you don't think you can handle that, or if that would be really unpleasant for you, please don't read it because it, it definitely, um, I was able to detach enough that it didn't cause me to like spiral about my own kids, but I could see in different times that it maybe would have. So that being said, I loved the book, Four Stars. Um, it was really interesting to see, you know, and, and it, it kind of has the roundabout message of um, what things are going to happen regardless and what things um, will change based on a momentary thing. Um and, you know, because some things ended up the same in both storylines and some things were drastically different, as you would guess. Um, and so that was interesting. And I was equally interested in both. Obviously, I was more interested in the one where the child was okay because it just was less painful for me to read as a mother and just as a human. Um, so I really enjoyed the story. But I would definitely say if you are an anxiety sufferer and if you are going through anything right now that this may trigger you, don't read it because it was definitely hard, and especially given the author's note of knowing kind of um, that it was like an anxiety spiral that – that. Uh, caused the book or like inspired the book um so yeah there's that next is maybe once maybe twice by allison rose greenberg and i gave this on three and a half stars so the premise of it is that this woman is turning 35 and like in the synopsis it says she has made two different packs with two different men saying hey if we're not married by 35 let's get married and that is like kind of what the book's about, but not really. Really, it's just kind of um, timelines or, or, or seeing like she had two loves of her life. One when she was like a teenager into her 20s and that man is now a famous, um, she's a musician, he's a famous, famous actor. He comes back into her life around the time she's turning 35 and then she also had a love um, in her mid to late 20s and um, that man also comes back into her life. And one storyline, one man's storyline was much, 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 much more prevalent than the others. And so you kind of knew what was going to happen the whole time. Um, the other thing this, like I couldn't really get past is one of the men is engaged. And um, so the fact that he comes back into her life should not be like a love triangle. It shouldn't even be an option. And yet it kind of was. And so um, I enjoyed the story. There were some times that it was a little slow, but it was still good. It just wasn't everything I hoped it would be. 
And then we have um, this one, The Good Luck Cafe by Annie Rains. So this is the one that I chose in my um, kind of single book TBR from uh, Books and Lala's uh, Scavenger Hunt. And this is one that's been on my shelf a while, and I don't know why. This is number four in her Somerset Lake series, but I've read – one and two, I think, and then I have not read three, and they're all companions. You definitely do not need to read any of these. There are, so the characters from the other ones are in this stories, but they are friends that if you don't know their backstory, you don't really miss anything. You just don't know their backstory. Um, so this one, it was super cute. It is, I give it three and a half stars. I think I enjoyed it more because I read it physically and because I, so like, therefore I spent more time with it. But, uh, this is about, uh, our main character is Moira and she is a 911 dispatcher and, um, her, like she, her mom owns Sweetie's Bake Shop, which is like this town relic. Um, and Sweetie's is in danger of being um, closed down because they need the space to build a parking lot because the like town center is no longer safe because um, parking on the street, people like police vehicles and stuff can't get through. So um, she decides to run for mayor and, um, to do that, she has to beat out Gil. And Gil and she have ha- had a long um, friendship relationship that's kind of enemies to lovers. He um, he was roommates with somebody she dated that took advantage of her. So definitely a trigger for or a trigger warning for um, rape, domestic abuse kind of things um, because that's definitely prevalent in this one. But so her and Gil have this storyline this past. Gil is not the one who abused her, but they have, he's always kind of been pining. And yet she is kind of like not happy with him, doesn't love him, um, all that kind of stuff. And then you see their friendship develop. I would say this one was much better than the Cheryl Lister one because you actually see their friendship kind of reemerge. You see her soften. You see how things end up before they become a, a thing. Um, and so this was predictable, but of course that's not like you don't read romance for huge plot twists. Uh, you read it to enjoy the ride. And I would say I did enjoy the ride. Is it something exceptional that I'm going to remember forever? Probably not. Um, but I give it three and a half stars. The main characters in this one are Moira and Gil. And then Gil has a brother um, with Down syndrome. And he's a character in this book. I don't know if he's going to get his own book or anything like that. But um, now I really want to go back and read number three because I haven't read that one. And I just, this Somerset Lake is so charming. So I really enjoyed it. And then the last one that I read um, was another uh, another Neck Alley book called Please Take My Baby by Emma Robinson. So this one, I almost thought, like, based on the cover and synopsis, that it would be a little thrillery, and it's not. This is just a women's fiction domestic story about um, – a woman who, so we get the story, we get the perspective of Erin, and Erin is a mother to a teenage daughter. Um, her ex-husband is, this is set in the UK, her ex-husband is about to move to the United States and wants to take the daughter with um, with him, and she's old enough now to decide. So um, she's kind of facing that stressor that, like, she she's about to potentially lose her daughter for, you know, not lose her, but, like, she's going to go live with the dad in America. Her mother is suffering from uh, dementia, and she's just got a lot going on. Well, then she finds a picture of her mother with a baby that she knows is not her. And she doesn't have any siblings, so she's like, what the heck, Mom? I, I, I'm assuming you've seen, like, kind of a drastic cut because I told you what happens in the first chapter, and I feel like that is the biggest downfall of this book is that it tells you in the first chapter what the situation what the whole situation is what the twist is um for lack of a better word it tells you who's who in all the relationships immediately and I feel like this would have been so much better if it kind of like had you in suspense wanting to know to and getting to figure it out um you do figure it out as the character figures it out but she figures it out in the first page or the first chapter and I wish it would have taken a little bit longer um because then you're just trying to figure so you know the who's who's and all the relationships what you don't know is maybe why and how it went down. Um, and so because of that, like, it's just kind of anticlimactic. You kind of, you get backstory, but it's like, I I didn't have time to get attached to these characters and, like, know the whole, or, like, be, get invested in the story before I was told all the things. And so, um, yeah. So Moira um, goes through some stuff. There's some family stuff. Uh I don't know. I don't really want to say any more than that. And like this definitely touches on postpartum psychosis and postpartum um, issues and kind of how we treat people with that. And so I I liked that it broached that topic, but it didn't really talk enough about that um, in a way that I felt was helpful. I'm I'm really flubbing this. Uh, It was just okay. Three stars. 
I would say tread lightly. I mean, it's not it's not really triggering for me, but um, maybe I don't know. It was just okay. All right. Uh, that's a good place to stop since I'm obviously not being eloquent at all. So um, that is everything I read in the first half of October. Let me know what your thoughts were, if you've read any of these books, if you're interested in any of these books. And um, yeah, that's it. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.